So we talked over the course of a, a few months, Brandon uh, Giga in the, the Discord has built out this great documentation for bot framework. And a lot of the work that he's done around it has been doing a chat bot. So to do that, he built out, um, I think he's doing it in Azure tables where he has to be able to store conversation IDs. Um, I didn't want to go that far. I wanted to build out a notification bot and actually have figured out a way to do that that doesn't require Azure tables. Um, I will say, go through his documentation. It's super simple. Um, you'll see a bunch of guides around floating around the internet about creating bots that um, get quite a bit more complicated, but realistically to be able to deploy this, you just need really the, the basic framework of having it installed in your Azure environment and then the um, deployment package. And he's got some great information around doing all of that. So I've got a process that we're working on developing with our software side of the company where we're trying to determine, you know, if we're going to get QA or maybe some of our trainers involved when we've got tickets that need to get escalated to our developers because, you know, somebody, one of our clients found a bug. Um, so I've got built out in uh, Roost a workflow that's fairly straightforward that just takes when a ticket gets submitted into a specific status the um, trigger just picks that particular status up got it you know filtered down by the right board and then my testing status while i continue to proof of concept this for our management so that they can work out exactly how they want to do this process uh, it takes the um, ticket it's going to get the ticket notes so that we can pull in the most what should hopefully be the most recent note in a properly formatted way. It's gonna verify that that format matches and I'll show you what that format looks like here in just a moment when I hop over to ConnectWise. Uh, it takes that note, formats it, and then smashes it all over to uh, Teams for the channel that we have yet to designate. Um, they're gonna be able to take a look at it. So here's how that looks when we're in ConnectWise and then Teams. So over in here, we kind of dictated a specific note format. And pardon my Figment, I love Figment, I miss Figment. I wanna go see Figment hopefully in uh, the summer when we're all hanging out in Florida. Um, but this is structured to make sure that it, it's giving all of the, the information to um, either our QA team or this is actually the same structure that I currently have it in um the process that actually sends our tickets from connectwise to our devops instance for our developers so what it, i do then is whenever we're ready to kick this off i'm going to put it into submit to qa status and save my ticket See here in just a moment over on the Teams side of the page, a, an adaptive card shows up. Then what's different about how I have it built is since I don't need to um, depend on an Azure table to do lookups, what I've actually done is I've coded in a second step that when it sends the the body it doesn't have any of the actions so i don't have any action fields down here anywhere in my jinja but the workflow will return a card id and a card activity id and this is the information that's needed to be able to update cards at a later date so i then actually then take that information add it into the um, body of the new message and down here you'll see in the action i've coded in the action type the um the information in the submit button it's going to just smash a json object with the submission so this includes you know things like the service ticket id the notes um the card id and the card activity id is all going to be included now in the json body so I can show you that by, we're going to go ahead and 
Actually, I'm going to do my decline because my approve is going to break some stuff on my R developer side and they'll yell at me. And I hit submit. So what I've got then is a handler built that now that when I've hit submit on that, the handler workflow is going to do, it's going to pick up that action title and it's a QA approval. So if I come in here, I can see it picked it up, dropped it in, ran it through the QA handler. And if I flip back over to Teams, it wiped out the buttons on the card and they can no longer take action on it and they're able to pull it out. Um, yeah, all the approve and decline do toggle. So your actions will open up. Um, one of the action buttons that you can build into the adaptive card is an open card. And so it'll actually open a new card. And if you select the, on the same level, different action cards, it'll actually flip between those. So then once I hit the submit, it wiped this out here. And if I refresh my ticket over here, um, I've got it to where it drops a note in, says it was reviewed by, and the reviewer notes. And then it, in this particular case, I have it um, put it into a status of additional information required for our service desk to go digging into whatever it is that the reviewer, QA or trainer, whoever it is, says we're missing this much information and they can go find what it is and dig deeper. Or if it's a, this was never supposed to work. Um, it was a bug in 6.10 and 7.2. It just finally works because we closed up a security hole or whatever that, that information is. So that's how you can manage to do all of this without requiring a additional service that you have to go out and, and be able to, uh, to look up. And uh, that information then is able to be actioned with, uh, with all kinds of things. Actually, Alden's showing a, a ticket assignment that I've been working on my bot being able to handle today. So I'm going to fake real quick my, uh, my bot, and it's going to do the exact same kind of idea. I will, uh, I've got it working on the back end, but you'll see here's the, um, a ticket needs to be assigned information, pauses just a second before it uh, sends over the actions. But in this case, it's gonna, with the same ticket, I'm gonna assign it, I'm gonna give it a note, you're our rock star, and select the resource. I'm gonna find myself on here. Are you just offboarding yourself live? What's that? Oh no, so this is a, it's a fake user, fake offboarding, but same idea here. I just uh, assigned myself to this ticket and it added me as a resource and include the assignment note. The only thing I can't figure out uh, what to do is how to package up the uh, notification that gets sent because it's a Rails action to do the assignment like that and um it won't it for so for right now it's not doing the little bell icon and uh email that you usually get when you get assigned to a ticket and connect wise yeah that would a great friday afternoon and I, I quit live on a rock call that'd be that'd be phenomenal <laughs> yeah it, literal it, mic drop yeah <laughs> I, it's this has been a really fun one to work on and I've, I've been working on this kind of off and on the last two weeks being able to do the bot handling back and forth and i've shown off kind of both of these to a couple of different decision makers and kind of similar to how when we onboarded with roost a year ago all of a sudden i'm getting the well can it do this can it do this can it do this can it do this so we're going to be able to try to figure out all kinds of uh of really fun ways to turn this this neat little I mean, the, the setup of the bot, I'm not kidding. If you run through Giga's instructions, takes minutes to create it, and then you create the app registration. The biggest thing, pain is then uploading it to Teams and waiting the five minutes to half a day that it takes for it to show up as an uh, application that you can then add to the different Teams channels. But yeah, no, that's, that's a... A way to do it without uh, without requiring uh, 
having a uh, an Azure table. I think technically, if I look at this, the the information that comes on here, I probably don't even need to hard code into the button some of the information, but I do anyway. And I'm not going to expand up this because I don't want you guys hitting my Teams channels. I'm smarter than that. I know they can blur it out for later, but I've seen what you Yahoo's in the chat will do right away. So um, I'm pretty sure it's included in the body here up here. I just didn't want to have to, to parse it out. 